And I am the voice actress for Farah. Farah reporting for duty. Dope. And Zenyatta, he of the wise old beard. Oh, indeed. Indeed. Hello, I'm Theodore Chin. I play Zenyatta. Experience tranquility. I want you to just say that to me all day long during this quarantine. Yeah, that would be great. Wouldn't that be nice? So I'm just going to yeah. re record you and play it nonstop. Lucy! Hello, I am Lucy Paul, and I play Mercy. Someone call the Wambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really say the Wambulance? Yeah, it's a Does new, so relative so new <laughs> voice line. I love I'm it! I'm so happy. I'm so happy about that. To go to Cameo and request you to do a video for me to to stay in the way. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm gonna I'm raise gonna my prices that. just for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know when I've sent it, and then you can send them back down for every deal. Perfect. Um, my name is Josh Petersdorf, and I play the Shakespearean <laughs> legend known as Roadhog. Ready to go, whole hog. <laughs> You just made me so want to hear Roadhog do Shakespeare. What doth like? Oh. <laughs> it, sound, it sounded like Alan Rickman. What Rickman. light? What light through yonder window break? What doth like? Some kind of light. Yeah. Good morning. Hey. Good to see everybody. Hey. <laughs> and Keith. Good morning, everybody. Keith Silverstein, voice of Torbjörn. Ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Arr, Thanks, Josh. Josh. <laughs> I'm his Back hype man. I'm Torbjorn's I'm hype man. Yeah. <laughs> Play the flame. Torbjorn is also <laughs> one of my favorite names just to say. Just to say for no reason. Just to say Torbjorn. He's just like <laughs> randomly throughout the day gives me great joy. But and I love uh, how you say even, be it. even before quarantine, I didn't get out very much. So, you have to yeah, say it three times fast, problem. though. Like I want him to appear like like Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> you have to hold you have to hold a hammer up and stare into the hammer and then say it three times. Mm. If you want, uh, if you want yeah. What if appear. I just hold? What if I just hold on to my like Torbjorn keychain over there? Would that? Can I do that? You should try well, it. It might work. What about the dance they made up for you in Kuwait, Keith? Did I have a, a Torbjorn dance? Yes, a special one in Kuwait. Remember the crazy Torbjorn dance that they made up? No, you're going to have to show me. <gasps> <laughs> what? That was like, I, think, um, someone that out there I remember the dance he does. <laughs> I remember the cheese remember. treat. <laughs> <laughs> cheese. <laughs> so speaking of, speaking of cheese, how about that for a segue? Um, I know we've all been separated and, and mostly quarantining in our homes. And I know, obviously, Boris, you are in the land of far away for, for, for the rest of us because you're all the way across the sea. But um, during this time, or even like in this last year, is there anything, is there any like new, um, I don't know, new skills or new hobbies or new fun things that you guys have taken on or new things that you've learned, um, like learned to do? I know all of us had to learn to put together a home studio, those of us who didn't have one, so there's that. But but other things that might be fun or things that you didn't expect that you would have found out or didn't expect that you would have done. I started mm. learning to play the guitar. I learned how to make banana bread out of quinoa flour, almond flour, regular flour, and whole wheat flour. Um, and no I learned no how bananas. To <laughs> no bananas. Well, which was better? Which flour was better? Yeah, which I one was the best? I really like, this is going to sound so douchey, but I really like the quinoa flour. Okay. I have to say. That doesn't sound douchey. I can see that. And almond flour is great for cookies, but that time is behind me. I no longer bake. That was just a phase. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I was baking a lot. you achieved it. Now it's over. What? You achieved it. Mission accomplished. Check. And then you're like. Done. On to the guitar. How are, awesome. how are, you, feeling about, how are you feeling about the guitar? Like, are you feeling feeling... Solid and Christy about what's going on? I'm feeling I like think. you're supposed to practice. And if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's I, I, started, I started with Wish You Were Here, Pink Floyd. And that was it during, you know, like kind of the middle of the quarantine. And I would get to the part where it's like, um, uh, how, how I wish you were here. And then I would just fall, like cry. 
and, mm -hmm. and it would make me feel so <laughs> in touch with my uh, rock star self. And then I <laughs> smash the guitar and then- Excellent. Uh, now, did you do like some, did you do some Pete Townsend? You got to do some Pete Townsend yeah. windmills before you smash it. But yeah, that one and Redemption Song. Those are the two I know how to play now. Oh, and I learned that Redemption Song, he says triumphantly. And I always thought it was try home friendly, but it's actually triumphantly. <laughs> Another thing I learned. Try home Something friendly. To know. Try home friendly. Try I love those friendly. moments when you have a when you have a, a lyric that you you uh you misunderstand you guys remember that song is move aside and let the man go through let the man yep. go through yeah I, uh, I have a friend who thought it was move aside and let the man go through let the man go through <laughs> so like so you like an idea of like a big walking mango like walking through like like mr peanut Oh. Or like rock the Casbah, rock the cat box, rock the cat box. This rock is so many. my best friend from college. Hers was Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. And it's that, can't let me in your penthouse. She was convinced <laughs> it's cat can't pee in the penthouse. And I'm like, dude, it's I mean, both not of those cat are true. can't pee. Like, no, that's it's both, that, yeah. Both of those are true, though. Both of those are accurate. The cat <laughs> can't pee in the penthouse. It's true, the cat can't uh, pee in the penthouse. Yeah. Okay, wait. Um, the classic song that wait. What a Fool Believes. For the longest time, uh, no judgment, I was singing, the white man has the power. <laughs> I always thought it was the white man has the power. <laughs> well, <he does> there <laughs> you go. I, I didn't judge it. I was like, no, he's he's right. No. Sure. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my no. goodness. Oh, my so, God. All, sorry sorry to go on this lyric thing, but all Latinos thought that it says the rhythm of the night. Oh, yeah. They thought it said... Are those Reeboks or are they Nikes? Because in Spanish, it's just Nike. Eso son Reebokos son Nike. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, things translate weird. And what are they? <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I think they're uh, Asics, but I, yeah. Sure, Pumas. 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 Yeah. B BK um, Knights. <laughs> I remember those. Remember those? <laughs> I do. I think I was in high school when those came out. Oh, my God. Boris, what have you, awesome. Boris, what have you been doing, uh, learning, finding out over the last years? I know you've, you've just released some information about a new project, so I don't know if that's how much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, that's stuff. it. I mean, you know, I've been really lucky because I've just been busy, 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 busy. I haven't, I mean, I would, you know, I feel I'm, I'm happy that that's the way it is, but sometimes I'm a bit jealous of all these, uh, of all these actors that can, <laughs> can learn a language and an instrument and, banana bread i would love to do that but um but i'm sure you guys have been really busy as well but i've just been whew, getting crazy slaving away on this video game uh called ori and the will of the wisps uh for with a company called moon studios and we released that in april and up until then it was just go 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 and then straight on to the next project which i can't really talk about um but we uh we what we kept a secret and was just unsecreted was that we worked on a Switch version of Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which is out today. Yeah. Um, and, um, nice. Yeah, that was really, really fun project. Because if I don't know if you guys know it, but it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful game. And uh, I worked on it as an animator and doing a voice of a big toad called Quallock. And, cool. um, and I was involved in the story department as well, developing kind of cinematics and, uh, and the flow of the storytelling of the game. So it was a lot of fun, really intense, really crazy, and uh, oh, and I was involved with casting as well and doing voice directing for the for the other oh, actors. Thanks Many for room. casting us. Yeah. Say that, right? <laughs> what am I, chopped liver? Come on! Yeah, hey. Oh, I don't know what. Uh, do you, that's that's strange. I kept calling and no one picked up the phone. Uh -huh. uh -huh. so, so, what? Yeah, so haven't learned anything new. I'm sorry to say. I mean, I mean, kind of, you know. Yeah, but that, but that in and of it, in and of itself, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping everybody else is as interested as, as I am because we don't get to talk about this as much. Being someone who's on both sides or on like seven different sides of this apparently septagon, um, uh, uh, like, uh, what is it? What's it like doing all of those different things? You have to really compartmentalize. Okay, now I'm working on it just as the actor, or are yeah. you always thinking of it from all different angles? while you're participating in those different things like a producer director actor would do or, or what 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 how does that work for you well it's just no sleep 
and no life and just yeah doing lots of you know doing yeah, sure um i mean it wasn't I, mean, I have to it wasn't quite as crazy as um i mean i came I, I directed this kids tv series a couple of years ago and i was so burnt out by it because as a director you really do a little bit of everything and then i want i wanted to i want an easy job working from home which is why i signed up for this one and uh but you know when i really got my my teeth sunk in they asked me to do more and more and more and more and i was happy to do it because i was so passionate about the project and so it kind of it kind of came natural to just do a lot of different things they allowed me to do it they needed people to do it it's a really interesting infrastructure they have at that studio where they allow everyone to kind of contribute uh what they will if they can and um and everyone feeds in so no, there's there's a hierarchy, but no one is like anyone's boss and like you do this and I'll do this. It's kind of everyone everyone feeds into the to the project, and that was just yeah. So it was I never took on more than I could chew, but it was always tight and and always kind of going. Uh, uh, uh. There was always many fires to put out. Well, but Boris, it's kind of you're also nice. learning to be a new dad. That's a huge job. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. I, I, I didn't learn I'm, I'm, That's the biggest thing. That's that. the biggest thing. Yeah. <laughs> Little Willow, you I just showed her before the call started. Um, she had her first birthday on Saturday, the 12th. Aww. Oh, my God. Oh, so wow. It's been the best year of my life and, uh, and the craziest year of my life. And, uh, well, Josh is in the same boat, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. We got Willow and Sonny. We're now girl dads. Me and Boris are girl oh. dads for the win. Yay. Girl dads are men for the win. Yeah, Keith's a girl dad too. That's right. Yeah, Keith, absolutely. Keith can Keith, Keith can give him some some hot tips. It, you good. know what I've learned uh, through uh, quarantine? I have a new mantra. Maybe Zenyatta can say this for me. Uh, <laughs> it's only kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that keeps me alive because I, I, I have to sit with my five-year-old while she does her online class, oh, which she uh... usually doesn't really, she just wants to color and draw things and half listen to the teacher. And so when I find myself getting frustrated because I'm trying to make her focus and she's doing it a different way, or I say, it's only kindergarten. Like, it's going to be fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll get through this crazy 2020 20 year of, of remote school and it'll, everything will be fine. <laughs> At least, wow! wow. <laughs> say, say it again, Phil. At least they're not in high school. Oh, ah, there right. you go. Yeah, there right. you go. That's so funny. Yes, yeah, so, you know, and my long-standing mantra along this vein is, has been like, "Children grow up in crack houses. He'll be fine." He'll be fine. Like I, this is always, I'm like, children grow up in crack. He's going to be fine. So it's, it's, uh, you know what? They're going to survive. Everyone's going to be okay with coronavirus. I was on the phone this morning with someone who was really worried about like middle school and kids falling behind and how are they going to do? And it's easier when they're younger. And I'm like, look, every child in the world is going to be struggling this year with school. Like, Everyone's going to get a little messed up this year. Yeah. Everyone's going to be fine. We're all going to be fine. We're all going to catch up. If there was a little bump this year, everyone will catch up and everyone will know, oh, how old were you in 2020? It's going to be fine. So don't worry. Child all the parents of the younger children, the kids will be fine. And they found life worried. on Venus, so we can go there too. There's that too. It's, everyone's going to be fine. <laughs> yes. yeah. seeing, seeing Crispin's face as that happens and I'm just, <laughs> our, our resident our resident astronomy expert tell us about the discovery of Venus, Crispin. tell us <laughs> it was like it was, who wasn't it found the life. Yeah. Uh, i mean if you like breathing acid by all means move to venus sounds like a fabulous <laughs> place to be slightly uninhabitable atmosphere just slightly <laughs> I think you're better off on the moon. We live in New York, okay? We breathe acid every day. <laughs> it's ready true. For, yeah. ready for the clouds of Venus. Los Angeles right. would agree with you right now. We've been breathing acid for the past about a week and a half as well. So. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh. A little, a little bit of breathing something. The smoke. And yes. we're sharing it with the world. So. Yes. Yay. You're welcome, world. Have some Canada, have some Idaho. Enjoy our smog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like going to Europe. It's going to Europe. Europe. Yeah. Um, I want to I want to let us get to some of these fan questions that are coming in hot and hot I would say hot and heavy. They're not coming in hot and heavy. But they are coming in fast and furious. Um uh, oh, this is interesting. What do you guys feel, if anything, is the unifying trait for all great voice actors? Do you have any, any 
commitment. You're the newest to our merry band. And so I want to, I'm interested in hearing what you think, like, especially coming into this gang of weirdos that we are. Do you feel like there is a, yeah, Jeannie, do you, well, yes. <laughs> do you feel like, did you have a, a favorite great voice actor? And what do you feel like is the unifying trait among all of them? I don't know if I have a favorite voice actor. I just love voices. I love languages. I love people communicating and using their entire body as a as the instrument. Um, but I, I think I think uh, it actually Caro just said it. You know, commitment. It is it's huge. And and one thing I do want to say about voice acting is that this is like my first big gig it's it's so huge it was so unexpected there's a part of me that felt like wow there are so many voice actors out there they're brilliant there are people who are just you know they're so in it they're so dedicated and I do multiple things you know so in some ways I'm like I'm not worthy there are people who are slogging their guts to you know and they're, they're just they're, they're practicing they're taking care of their voice and but I think if you just love sharing story you know and you love using the instrument. Um, I think that's 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 what we all love doing. We all love telling story in our own unique or made up kind of way. So um, that's that's what I feel about voice. I know that everybody has a different um, approach to it, and I'm just in awe of all of you. You know, so I really do feel like I'm not worthy, but at the same time, I'm very happy to accept the invitation and to be here with you all. So. So that's my nugget of, uh, of, of my experience. Well, you're very worthy because you kill Echo. Yes, Kristen. Uh, I would say that the unifying thing that I find in voice actors, and I would say this probably applies to artists in general, is they're obsessed. Um, there's a certain mm -hmm. obsession that comes from someone who wants to do artwork on a professionally competitive level. And that obsession can take many different forms. Some people are obsessed with character. They're obsessed with doing different types of characters and figuring out the psychology of characters. Some people are obsessed with sound, right? They're, they're obsessed with creating different sounds with their mouth and whatnot. Um, I'm the kind of person who's obsessed with story. I'm obsessed with the meaning behind story and the structure of story. And so I always want to figure out how can I play a character that will serve the story best. Some people are obsessed with collaborating with their fellow actors. They love just feeding off other actors and, and, and figuring that out. Everyone's got their different obsession. But if you ever uh, try to pin down anyone who's successful as a voice actor, as an actor, or as a creative in general, there's something that they're obsessed about that they just you know, they get it between their teeth and they won't let go. Love that. That's, yeah, that's a great, well great, great point. Paul? I think uh, for me, it's imagination. I think voice actors have to have like just amazing imagination because, you know, you just get a script and you don't have any visual at all. So, you know, you have to sort of create all of that, you know, in your mind. I mean, especially when you have scenes where someone says, oh, yeah, this monster's, you know, just came out of the ocean and he's turning towards you and you have to run and then you have to like, you know, fall down 20 steps, you know, f flights of stairs and then, you know, make this sound. You have to be able to see all of that in your mind, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. that's what makes it uh, more interesting, you know, and fun when, is when you can actually see that. Yeah, definitely agreed. Jen? I always think that the common denominator is voice actors have to be good listeners. Mm. And I think in general, like whether you're a voice actor for games or for animation or for commercials, you have to be good at listening to the group that you're in. You have to be listening for timing. You have to take direction well. You, ha you have to, if there's source material, you have to listen to that. If there are questions being asked of you that you're responding to, you have to hear questions. I, I feel like being a deep, interested, curious listener is what makes you a good voice actor. And every good voice actor, a successful voice actor I know really listens well. Uh, sorry, mm. what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to do it. It had to be it had to be the comedian. Okay. Someone had and to I step suppose, in. Uh, Thank you for doing that for no, we, we need we depend on you for that. I suppose as well the ability to think on your feet, right? That kind of feeds into what Jen is saying that 
very often with voiceover gigs with that with regular like film and television jobs you get a script a, a while in advance and you get to learn your lines and you even get to talk to people about it probably maybe rehearse a little bit and uh, so when you do the thing on the day you you know you got a pretty good idea of what's going on with voice acting you often don't get the script until you are in the booth um, and even if you do get the script it's often not until like a night in in advance or something and you read it and you think ah yeah i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do this and then you bring all that to the session and then the director tells you for the first time oh i want you to do this 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 and this and that which is completely different and then you go uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and then you still have to be able to kind of deliver what they want on the spot and as fast as possible please because we only have 45 minutes to do this so yeah, thinking on your feet is, I think, uh, and being able to still make that sound kind of fresh and spontaneous and good is, uh, uh, is, 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 I don't know. I don't know how people do it because <laughs> it's hard. Well, I, 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 I think I agree with you. The, the sense of the combination of immediacy and a giant sense of play, just mm. a willingness to play. Because oh, we absolutely. all need that as actors in all media, media in all media, in all media. Um, but we, you know, no matter what we're doing, we need... We need that sense of like, okay, sure, I'll try this without judging ourselves. But I think it's so vital in voice acting to just be like, okay, go with the flow and create create on the fly. Um, some, I mean, it's amazing to watch other people. It's amazing to watch some of the folks, especially like a lot of the folks in this cast, um, to watch them do that in other sessions and stuff. I know Carolina's had the same experience being able to watch Fred, just kind of like. And, and Darren DePaul. Fred it up. And uh, Darren, oh, Scott, yeah. yeah, both of them. And just kind of like watch them just come up with 20 different characters and voices on the fly. They're so completely different. And it's really fun to watch everybody, everybody doing that. Um, Someone wants to know, what is your process for developing a new voice for a new character? Do you feel comfortable embodying that character anytime, anywhere? Does anyone have a, like a specific process or a, a process that they use regularly or anything like that? Crispin. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm. My goal is always to try to find the psychological center of the character. I think a lot of times when people think about voice acting, they think it's about finding some sort of funny voice for the character. But yeah. if you try to do some vocal pyrotechnics for a character, that's like the sauce you're putting on something. And there's no amount of ketchup that will make up for bad acting. Like you, you actually have to have the psychological center of the character underneath, and then you can put some sauce on it if you want. <laughs> You know, so people think, oh, like my Winston voice, I just came up with a big rough voice. Well, if I just did that, it would sound dumb. Like I have to know where the psychology of the character is coming from. And usually when people, when I'm trying to help my students figure out the psychology of a character, the two big questions that I like to make them answer is, what is the a character obsessed with? And what were they hurt by? And usually those mm. two are connected. Right. Like what's what's their main sort of damage and what are they obsessed with? And, and the two often relate. And that can give you a, a, a good starting point about trying to figure out where the character comes from. And then as a voice actor, I think it's far more important to be the actor of a thousand psychologies than the actor of a thousand voices, because it's it's the psychology that will actually make the character different. Like when they used to when, when before we lost uh, Joe Alasky, who used to do the voice of Daffy Duck. Um, they, they would ask Joe, uh, you know, can you do Daffy Duck for us? And he would say, which one, 30s, 40s, or 50s Daffy? Like he had so tuned Daffy mm. Duck's voice in to the psychology of how Daffy Duck was with Tex Avery, Avery or Frizz Freeling or Chuck Jones or you know, different directors that he could dial in the psychology of that, of that character that specifically, even though we all supposedly know what Daffy Duck sounds like. Um, so that's usually what I'm looking for is trying to find that psychological center of the character. And then the, the sauce or the, the tone comes later. Wow. So, I'm going to go you quick, made me feel right now. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I love that. It made me feel so much better because honestly, I never think of myself as someone who has a million different voices. And a, like, like many of the rest of us, I came to this more from a, either a stage acting or a film acting or whatever before we came to this. And all acting is, that's where you start, right? You have to start on the, in, on the side with the character before you feel, before you figure out how that is expressed into the world. So this made me feel better about my own career. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I love that. 
Crispin, I feel like you're the Lee Strasberg school of voice acting <laughs> and I'm the Stella Adler school of voice acting because while I love paying attention to, I mean, obviously you have to know what, what motivates you and what your motives are. But the first thing that I pay attention to is how do they stand? What are they wearing? Where do they breathe? What physically, how are they physically built? And so the first thing that I do is I find out, well, first their name, because whoever named the character, like names are very revealing. Then I need to, I love to see a drawing. And if I don't, a drawing is really great. That's like the first clue. Cause then I can get into a posture and I can get into a stance depending on how they garb themselves or what their skin is made of or what their mouth is shaped like. That's gonna determine so much of what their voice is gonna sound like. And then once I have that stuff down is when I'll start looking at what motivates them because it's all sort of, for me, encapsulated in what their package looks like. Sure, um, and, and that's, yeah. that's the difference between inside out voice acting and outside in voice acting. I mean, historically, all acting has been outside in. It's been far more like choreography. <laughs> if you go back to Bharata Natyam dance theater or Japanese no theater or mm -hmm. Greek tragedy, where you have the Cathernai and the mask and everything else, there was external requirements that you had to be able to fill that character. And when I work with my students on developing new characters, I, we do Commedia dell'arte. I give them Italian Commedia masks and have yeah. them, because the mask gives them permission to play a character they never mm -hmm. would have given themselves permission to play play before. Yeah. It's only in the 20th century with the invention of film that we have this sort of inside out obsession with figuring out the psychology of the character. But so often now, the, what, what, what people are calling for, especially with something like in video games even more so, is they want cinematic, they want it real. Well, there's nothing real about voice acting. What it is, is, is it believable, right? I don't care about real, I care about believable. And right. so it depends. If you want to do the inside out way of doing it, that's great. You want to do the outside in, it's all trying to get at the same target. It's just whichever tactic works. I mean, I come from Suzuki actor training where I'd be doing like Kabuki style movements and stuff on stage. And that's what I bring when I go to my voice acting stuff. So it's, I, it. you know, the psychology stuff is just, it, it's easier for, because that, that's what people are more well, It's just with. an easier way for you to clue into it. It's, it's the yeah. place that you go in first. Like I go out in just first, it's where it's more obvious for me doing those characters. I love it though. And, and I think, but I think that that's, that's also a great answer to this question too, is that every actor find their own way in and you, you learn what your process is through doing. And some of us don't have a specific process for all things. You just have a big toolbox and you just say, okay, well, what's appropriate for this particular project, for this particular medium, for this particular character, for, for whatever you're working on, or what's appropriate for what I am, where I am today as a human being and as an actor, right? We, we, we use different tools for different circumstances so the fact that there's an outside in and there's there's that you could do inside out you could do outside in upward downward diagonal I don't know all the different things I think that it's nice that we all have the um the, those options did anybody else Definitely. have a have a have any specific like or things that they add to that anything any ways in well, I think part of it is just like I've said this a lot is just talking to yourself, you know, uh, I'll, if I'm driving and I'm listening to NPR and there's like, uh, we are interviewing now live from, you know, like Lebanon, this is what is happening. Like my Arabic accent isn't perfect, but I'll start like imitating or repeating what they're saying just to like, just to get into the, 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 the what, how does it roll off your tongue? And so I'm constantly just imitating things I see in movies or like when I was watching uh, Money Heist, uh, it's awesome that uh, Tokyo is always uh, narrating because then I'm really- I I really Tokyo to... is you. I still say Tokyo is you. Well, I Within want to be her. Five seconds of yeah. watching that, uh, that's, that's you, sorry. But no, so it's, it was really great because she she narrates. And so the whole time she's like, and I'm like, oh, that's how you do it. So I'm trying to learn a, you know, a Castilian accent. So I, I feel like practicing stuff, it, we can't just leave it here. It's got to roll off our tongue or else it's just this like imagination thing that doesn't exist and we got to ground it. So uh, practice. I'm a big um, believer in intuition too, like what sort of your first impulse is and to listen to that and and trust it and go with it. And then book zero job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I subscribe to the Lucy Pole method. That is. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, there, there are a lot of different ways to to, to go into uh, doing a character and coming up with a voice and a character for it. Um, 
And sometimes the first one you go with, like sometimes your intuition, like you said, works great. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you want to play against characters. So I know like uh, some of you mentioned, like looking at the character and what they look like and everything. But uh, frequently it's better to go a different direction. You know, they'll tell you if they want a parrot voice. If it's a parrot, if the character is a parrot, you'll know. It'll be very clear. So if they're not asking for a parrot voice, try something totally different. Um, yeah. So I find if, if I'm not happy with one of those approaches, because I love all those different approaches, and I'm just not happy with what I'm coming up with, it's great to reach into that toolbox and like, you know what, let me do it the other way around. Let me try it this way. Let's just see when something, you know what, maybe an impression, maybe uh, something I, I was mimicking a couple of days ago. Maybe I'll try it here. Does it work? Yeah. So it, it's just kind of knowing when you found it also, I think having the different options, because I can't say that any one of those always works for me, or at least makes me happy or helps me book the gig. It's, it's kind of jumping around. Mm. And I feel like oh, sorry. No, there's just shitty impressions. Like I'm not good at impressions, but if I try to do an impression, that could tr become a character that people yes. aren't going to go, oh, that's Christopher Walken, but it's my really crappy Christopher Walken. And then it works for a character that has nothing to do with Christopher Walken. And I feel like that also is helpful. Lucy, just, you just got to be careful. You don't get good at that impression. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once you're booked for doing it poorly and then like, wait a minute. <laughs> sound like Christopher Walken. Hang on. Do you guys do you guys use do you guys find that you use different processes during when you're doing a character for an audition versus when you're doing a character or trying to find a character in session? And even if like say like I know for some of us, you know, Jen, you talk about this a lot that you did a very different voice or you or it was a very different character when you auditioned. Yeah. That you didn't even think that you were that you you thought they made a mistake when they said they cast cast you as this role. Yes. And so in a sense, it's, it's different. It, it, is there something that you do differently in auditions that you versus what we're doing in sessions? Well, I mean, that was an instance where I think that if I had been in, in a live audition for that one, if I had a casting director explaining the character to me, I probably would have done what I would imagine Farah to sound like. But that was one where I was home and I only had pages uh, that were sent to me. And I had a, like a little blurb. And from what I was able to gather from that, I imagined this villain. And so I did this villain audition, having no idea that she was a hero, like having no clue at all. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it's different. All you can do is take the information that's available to you and make the assumptions mm -hmm. you're gonna make. And that was an instance where Andrea Toyas knew me and had heard things that I'd done. And I guess she could hear within the villain and within other stuff I had done for World of Warcraft that, oh, if I give her a little bit of an adjustment, she'll make it like this. And that I knew that it would adjust. So I think that's uh, one of the, the, the missing puzzle pieces too is, for me personally, a lot of times when I do an audition specifically, I feel very lost because you only get two or three takes. Sometimes they're very specific. So I'll dig through 15 takes I did and just wreck my mind over which one, you know, uh, mm. to send. And then so I'm always, I love when I, when you book a job and you go in the booth, I love just having the person there. Like, what do you want? You know, like now we can talk face to face. Do you want them like this? Do you want them like that? No, perfect. Yeah. Let's go. You know, and that kind of mm -hmm. like is the final piece of the puzzle for me. And it ends a little bit of the anxiety of the audition at least. So, but I, I, I say this all the time. It's always the ones you, you kind of throw away are the ones you book because mm -hmm. you can yeah. kind of hear it in your voice that you just let yourself go a little bit and you weren't so wrapped up. And there's been a million times that I've done, in my opinion, of course, these amazing uh, auditions that were fabulous and I was so pleased with the audition that I didn't mind if I didn't even get the job because I was like hey I did I did my best and I'm just happy with what I put forward and and if I don't get the job it's not because of anything I did it's just that they weren't looking for something like that so that's okay yeah. you know that's just the nature of the beast of the business you know that that sure. that ultimately for me what what it's all about that as as an actor all you can control is that one performance for your audition and as long as you're happy with that, then you've done your job. Because after that, the casting is, it could be a myriad of things that you have absolutely no control over. So okay. uh, in order for, for your own sanity and peace of mind, you just have to be, as long as you're happy with that audition, that you've done your job, that's it, you're done. Yeah, a very smart teacher said to me many years ago that every audition, you're auditioning not for that job or that role, you're auditioning for your career. 
that you're just, you're mm -hmm. always auditioning for your career. So, so long as you're happy with the job you did and you walk away excited about it or pleased or, and I, I've had that sensation of like being satisfied in that performancey way. Like I did a good one. That was a great yeah. one. And it doesn't matter if you book it or not, because every time that your work goes out, it speaks for you. And then you'll yep. be thought of for the next project. So that's. Yeah. Does anyone like do this? <laughs> No, I, my, my defense mechanism against all the, you know, the rejection that we all get is that I literally will like forget about stuff like, like minutes after. Me too, so always. If yeah. my agent calls me and says, oh, well, you booked this. And I think, when did I do that? <laughs> what was that? Yeah. And then I get to the job and I'm thinking, you know what? Can, I, I don't even remember what I did here. Can you play me a sample? <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, with voiceover audition, auditions, especially at the yes. same the same way, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Theo, what were you gonna say? No, I do that too, but I think it's just I have memory problems. <laughs> <laughs> Theo just gets so many auditions he can't possibly remember. Yeah, well, yeah that's <laughs> where am I? We're in Overwatch together, Theo. Oh, is that? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, he that's also what, yeah. he just voiced somebody in Mulan. So uh, excuse yeah. me. Uh, <laughs> That's right. It's so, so cool to funny. watch all of the different things that everybody has going on. And also, just I love so much how many different backgrounds that, that everyone on this panel and everyone in our cast comes from in terms of coming to this particular job. I know, you know, some of us came from theater and some from film and some from animation. And, uh, and, and Jeannie, I know you have a, a bunch of different things that you, that you do. And I feel like the Overwatch world doesn't, the, the Overwatch community doesn't know you necessarily as well because uh, because you are new to us and, and we welcomed you in while we were all essentially in quarantine. So can I put you on the spot a little bit and, and, and have you talk about like where, how, how you came into this world? Like, were you doing, not how you came into this world. We know. You know how were you born, Jeannie? How, did how you were you born? Into the world? You know how that is. <laughs> we all do this. <laughs> like, you came in like that. <laughs> she was feet first. Wow. Okay. But yeah. But were you, um, were, you know, have you started as a writer, as an actor? You, were, I know all of the different. I know all of the different lanes you are in. Where, where did? I, I have done the journey? Um, so many things because my brain demands it of me. Um, uh, I've got this left brain that just just wants to be creative and wants to try everything. I've got this right brain that's just like, what, what is wrong with you? So I, I, a lot of the time it was really hard for me to concentrate on one thing. And as much as I see, you know, some people have a straight arrow and they know what they want to do. I felt like I knew what I wanted to do, but I got distracted with like, oh, shiny things. I'm going to become an artist. And so I went, <laughs> to, you know, and, and then I ended up as a makeup artist. So I ended up on set because my art skills took me to makeup and then someone saw me on set and I ended up auditioning for a role and felt like, wow, I don't have the tools to become an actor. So now I'm going to go and study to become an actor. And so then I studied to become an actor. And meanwhile, I'm writing because I felt like I don't see anybody from the stories that I really connect with. So I started writing and that's that's where my heart is you know I love human stories just talking about um or listening to Crispin oh, I'm I'm all about dissecting character I want to know what your fears are what you need what are you moving towards what are you moving away from um your whys your patterns I just I love that um and so when it came to voiceover um you know, I'm a Brit in LA and you get a lot of people going, oh, I love the way that you sound. Oh, that's fantastic. Who? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know who's talking to you like that. Oh, I hello, love the way you sound. Oh, I love the way you sound. Nice <laughs> British girl. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who's talking Wrong to you like that. Cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Twinting them. Yeah, 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 baby. Yeah, baby. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> they were terrible. Terribly evil people. Um, uh, so, so, you know, I thought, well, yeah, my voice is my voice. We've all got something unique going on. Um, I love doing accents. I love the British Isles accents because I am I am British born Chinese, Vietnamese. But um, so like Carol was saying, I love to just listen to like, oh, that's really cool how this Ethiopian woman is speaking English and, and you know, and, and like Castilian Spanish or, or Vietnamese, you, you know. So I love just the sounds of human beings and, um, 
And so I thought, well, I'm I'm going to make a reel. I'm going to try this um, as actors. We're, you know, we have to make a living and it's not always consistent, especially if you haven't made it. You know, we've uh, I know some of us have worked in restaurants or done catering gigs and, um, you know, tutoring children. And so, you know, it was just something like, what else can I do that's still creative, that still allows me to tell a story of another human being, um, not necessarily on camera, and that's totally fine. Um, and so I, I, I made a reel, you know, I, I just went online, I looked at lots of resources, I listened to, to lots of interesting voices, and also what was in my wheelhouse. You know, um, I wanted to be authentic to what was within my range. Um, I don't have a huge range. I don't have like a, a higher range voice. I can go quite deep. But so so just knowing what I was capable of at that time, um, I created a reel and I was really fortunate. I had a friend who is was at Vox uh, here in L.A. and she was really, really gracious. And she walked my reel in to um, uh to Tom Lawless and uh, at, at the time, uh, I think it was Alyssa Weisberg. Um, and and they were really great. They were just, they were very open about it. They, you know, and I, I remember sitting there just thinking, this is just, you know, this is just opportunity. And hopefully I've done enough work for that opportunity to meet, um, sorry, hopefully I've done enough work to meet that opportunity. And, uh, and, and so they took me on. At three years, it took me three years years to book Overwatch so you know in that three-year time still getting rejection from on camera still writing and 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 fulfilling you know my sole passion um and and feeling like god I don't know if I'm cut out for this I'm trying to do I'm doing these auditions I think my my setup maybe isn't good enough How, what, what's going on here and then when I came to Overwatch I remember going into to the booth and I I, I rented a half an hour time uh, over at voice, voice tracks west and uh, art butler directed me he was a session engineer and he was he was just like just just throw it away just do what feels natural to you blizzard loves just you know they listen for the person they're listening for the real person in there even though you can create character so let's just have a go at this robot who's not a robot but who is a robot but don't play her like a robot you know <laughs> So I, you know, it's like, oh, too much direction. So I just dug deep into, into who I was with the givens of the fact that, you know, the breakdown of who they told me she was. And, and then I let it go because I'd already had three years of feeling like, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel terrible. And just flogging myself. And that gift of letting go of, you know, the pressure, you know, let somebody else decide whether you're good enough. You do a good job you feel good about it. And that's exactly how I felt. I walked out of the booth thinking that was such a good experience and it was worth it. And even if I don't, mm. oh wow, it adds to mm -hmm. my, that nugget of gold. That yeah. right. And that's, that speaks very similarly to what Theo was talking about. So you know that you just have to, you have to find some way, we have to find some way as actors to be satisfied with the experience of the audition. Um, or to be, like to be satisfied with that being that unique experience, and then the booking of the job is a completely different thing. Um, and do you guys find? I'm I'm curious. Was there ever with any of you some big risk you took career-wise, whether in an audition or at a job or in your career in general? Just some big huge risk that you took that, uh, or what felt like a big huge risk that you took. Um, that then surprised you, like something something particularly scary that you had to do, um, that then surprised you on the other side. Headshots. As an actor. <laughs> <laughs> your headshots. Your headshots are scary. Was My headshots. Case? The only reason I I never I moved to Los Angeles trying to become a voice actor, and when I worked, I told the story I think the other day a little bit, but I'll I'll, I'll quick quick recap. Basically, uh, the, my first and only headshots that I've had professionally done were for a job at Universal Studios uh, when I have the honor of portraying Optimus Prime and Megatron uh, in the live meet and greet, and so that automatically kind of gave me a nice like daily gratification of meeting children and doing that but that was something stepping out of the comfort zone because i'd never done anything like that and doing an improv something like that 
Um, and that was something that when I spoke to Andrea Toyas when I was recording Roadhog, we really bonded over that. And we really got a really cool conversation going about how it was one of my favorite, most rewarding parts of the job is being able to tell children how brave they are and how proud I am of them and how smart and strong they are because maybe they don't hear that enough. And the kids of our world need to know that they're amazing young children. They need to know that they can do anything they want. Optimus thinks you're amazing. And if I went to see a theme park, the first thing I thought is, what would I want to see? And I'd be like, I want him to blow my mind. I want him to tell me that I looked at my satellites tonight and I saw you driving here and you used an eco-friendly car and I couldn't be more proud. Like, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. So for me, that was, that was a little bit of a, it helped a lot. You know what I mean? It helped break, give me, it was a great confidence booster um, going into, cause it's a brutal world voice acting. You know what I mean? You, you hear no a lot more than you hear. Yes. So you know, just keeping the faith within and keeping your own fire and your inner fire built. Like Jeannie said, you are worth it and you are amazing. So dig deep and find what makes you, you. Mm. I love that. Go, go, you can. I, you know, it's funny. I'm sitting here racking my brain and then I'm remembering there was a point I had been with a very good voiceover agent for a, for a few years. And Jeannie, like you, I had been auditioning and auditioning and auditioning. And I mean, I was auditioning every day and not booking anything. And I'd finally gotten to this place and I kept worrying, like, is this, is this going anywhere? Is this not? And I just started booking. Like I just begun booking. I, I just booked Avatar, The Last Airbender. I had just booked uh, a couple of commercials. Like it just had started. And a few uh, casting directors started saying to me that I should be at a different agency. They started saying, you know, oh, you really should be somewhere else. And now mind you, these agents had just invested years into me. And, and meanwhile, I'm hearing this from casting directors and it happened enough times that I went in and sat down with my agent and said, this is what these casting directors are saying to me, what do you think? And he kind of shrugged and like, didn't say anything. Well, then I heard it more and I went in a second time and I said, look, what, I don't know what, I don't know what to do with this. Like, what do I, what do I say? Like, this is what they're saying to me. And he said, why don't you look around? And he said it in this very weird kind of cold tossed off way. And this is a guy who I knew really cared about me and had invested. And I was like, what? Like I was really thrown by his reaction. And I was like, oh my God, did I really, did I, did I put my foot in it for saying something? It just, He's, why don't you look around? So it happened, this happened right before I was going away on a trip. And I went on the trip and while I was away, I sort of got to unplug and think for a little bit. And somehow while I was out of the scene, I said, okay, I can, I am going to look around. And I made a list while I was away of where I was going to look and who I was going to talk to and who I was going to ask to introduce me and what I was going to do. And I, and I, I sort of just said, you know what? I'm gonna throw the chips where they're gonna fall. I'm gonna see how this is gonna go. Uh, it's, it must be time for me to move on. It must, I got back. I started making phone calls to meet people. And the next day, my agency announced that they were closing their commercial division. And so it was, he obviously couldn't tell me, but he knew what was coming down the pike. He wanted me to wrap my head around it. And I was the first person out of that agency who had appointments all over town. And so then I got to pick where I was going to go from there, but I was ready. Like other people sort of scrambled when it happened and had an extra month of trying to figure it out and figure out where they'd fall. But his reaction and my taking the risk and then my getting myself set up for it really set me up to succeed and to have my pick of the litter of where to go from there. And I've been with the same agency from that switch for 15 years now. So I remember that was like, that was a moment. I was like, oh my gosh, did I screw up? And no, it was great. And, and he actually did me a favor. Oh, you're muted, Angela. Yeah. Kristen? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was working as a theater actor. I mean, I, I had I'd grown up wanting to basically be Gene Kelly. I wanted to be a s actor, singer, dancer and went off to uh, New York to go to grad school. And right after grad school, uh, booked a part on a Broadway show and was working, you know, Broadway regionally uh, off Broadway, whatnot. And then but I'd always been a pa uh, fascinated with uh, Japanese animation. I'd grown up watching anime and had been really passionate about it. And a friend of mine put me in touch with the studios and I started dubbing some Japanese animation in New York while I was doing theater. And I found myself getting more excited about working on Japanese animation and working in animation than I was about being on Broadway. And I was mm. like, whoa, what's going on here, right? And so then I like, mm. okay, I have to make this decision. I guess I need to follow this voice acting thing more fully and New York's probably not the best place for it. I should probably move to LA. So I moved to LA and my mom was like, do you have a job lined up yet? And I'm like, mom, it doesn't really work like that. Um, you know, and so <laughs> I come out- Your mom and my parents hang out. They I know, must. right? And so <laughs> I, I, I got out to LA and I booked two really big uh, uh, roles. I booked the villain in the Cowboy Bebop movie and I booked a role in the fourth season of Digimon as one of the main characters. And I got fired from both of them <laughs> because- Fired? Fired, I got let go from both jobs because my skills were not good enough yet. They have been really mm. good in the New York environment, but when I'd come to LA, I was playing in a different league and I just was not up to speed with the LA things. Um, in Cowboy Bebop, it was partly because I was miscast. Um, I'm like 10 years younger than the rest of the voice cast and I was playing a character that needed to be a tank, that needed to be really big and I just didn't sound heavy enough. Um, and then with Digimon, I just wasn't up to speed. And then I was like, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, heartbroken. What the hell? I've come out here to do this and I get fired from two really high, high profile jobs that I was really excited about. I was like, okay, back to basics. What do I got to do? And for like the next six months, I'm taking classes and I'm working with people that I've met in the industry and trying to figure out how to do it. And ironically enough, I got cast as the twin brother in, po in Digimon of the character I gotten fired as. So I wasn't good oh, enough wow. to play him, but I was good enough to play his twin brother, right? <laughs> And so I get cast as a twin brother and I'm working and it's the same uh, woman who was directing me in Cowboy Bebop. And I said, Ooh, I think I figured out how to do that tank character in Bebop. And I, and I did the voice just randomly for her. And she's like, that's it. How come you couldn't do that six months ago? And I was like, I don't know. I just wasn't ready. Like I hadn't, I hadn't yeah. gotten up to speed, but now, now I'm there. Oh. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's when we get our butt handed to us, that we have to sort of recreate and figure out what we've got to do to get to the next level. That is so, 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 so true. So true. Paul, do you, Paul, do you find, um, cause I know you, you too come from a Broadway background and a theater background. Do you find that there is a lot of, um, do you find that there are things from the theater that you would take with you into voice acting? Like I know for me, it definitely feels like the vocal training that we got becoming theater actors is super helpful endurance wise. Do you, do you feel like there's, there's anything else crossover that helped out or that? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think the energy level that is required, uh, you know, to be on stage, that kind of intensity of energy and uh, intensity of um, vocal projection. I mean, I think definitely, has helped in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, doing voiceovers, because I think you can, because you're in front of a mic, you know, and because you are um, in, like in a booth, you, you can kind of start feeling like, oh, well, you know, I don't want to be too big here, or I don't want to be, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, you have a tendency to try to make yourself a little bit, you know, smaller, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, working on stage, it's like, that's the energy level that you have to have all the time, you know, so, and it, and it gives you a place of where to go that you have a bigger range, you know, of, of, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, I think that that's helped tremendously, you know, in terms of, of being doing theater, you know, eight shows, eight shows a week, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, this is going to be a terrible segue, but I gotta go, I gotta go straight to some fan questions because I've been asking all these questions that I want to hear your answers <laughs> to. I gotta ask big ass questions that the people want to hear the answers to. Um, you mean there are people you watching? Can, <laughs> there are people watching, you guys. They're watching uh, our hang. Um, uh, if you could direct an animated short of your character, what would it be about? Or if you could, let's say if you could create it or you don't have to direct it. If you, if, if you were writing, creating, whatever, 
your animated short, what would it be about? What, Caro? Oh my God, you're so okay. excited. Sombra and Symmetra are robbing a bank. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's all I got. That's, that's our. And that's good. You can't tell them about our weekend plan. What are you doing? You can't tell the world. Oh. Now we can't do it. <laughs> I, got no, I got nothing. Uh, so uh, people need to understand that when I first came and started working on Overwatch, I thought I was a secondary character or a tertiary character because I saw Winston as sort of like Beast in X-Men. You know, he's mm -hmm. like Hank McCoy. He's blue, he's furry, he's a scientist. He, he probably says, oh, my stars and garters. Like he's just a nerd who's playing with his science stuff. It wasn't until a year worth of recording on Overwatch that I finally realized that like Winston was the heart of the team, that like he's the one who's got the Rolodex who pulls everybody in and I was like, Oh, I'm Professor X. I'm not Beast. I'm like a, I'm like a big deal, aren't I? And they're like, Yeah, you're a big deal. I was like, Okay. So then, early 2019, they'd say, Okay, we're gonna we can't tell anybody about this, but we're gonna be doing Overwatch two, and we need to come you have you come in and do the next animated short. And so they showed me Zero Hour, which is the short that they aired yeah. at BlizzCon in 2019, right? So they showed me the animatic uh, for the for for Zero Hour, and I'm sitting in. The and I tell people, like, I'm usually a pretty zen voice actor. Like, things don't get under my skin. But man, Overwatch will make me choke up. And I'm in the mm. studio watching stuff, and Overwatch will make me choke up. And they showed me the animatic for Zero Hour, and I just looked at them. And I said, did you just make this for me? Like, is this, how did you, how did you know? <laughs> like, did you just decide you were going to make a film just for me? Okay, let's record this. But how do I avoid, like, tearing up? All right, let's do this. Like, yeah, so I mean, as far as I'm totally spoiled, like they just keep making stuff that I love. I don't know what else to ask for. Aww. Yay. Winston's such a pivotal part to Overwatch too. He's such like, he is such the the aortic valve of the heart. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He is the the pumping, pulsating lifeblood. I love it. Aw, thanks Josh, <laughs> absolutely. Lucy, what would your, Lucy, what would your uh, 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 short be about? I mean, I always say that I love so much to be surprised and educated by, by what they come up with. So I sometimes like I don't dare go there because the writers are so great and I feel like, oh, I don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I would love to like, this is a little bit boring, but I would love to just delve into like, um, uh, the story of Mercy's parents, um, that we know, you know, were, um, killed in the war and the background of her education, how she came to, um, do what she does. And then I would love to find out more about her and Moira. I, there's like a lot of relationships, you know, why is she such a slut that <laughs> around so much? No, no, joking, joking. Um, but, so easy. But I think that there's a lot of drama in her past that I would love to explore. Um, and like, there's, I think there's like darkness that she has turned to good and light for herself, but I'd love to explore that and find out all the darkness and drama that um, occurred in her younger mm. years. Mm. Theo, you looked like you had some ideas uh, there for, for the Zen master. Let's see, I, I think I would love to see a short where uh, Zenyatta is trying to learn how to juggle. <laughs> It's very, it's like, this is frustrating. I am not enjoying that, you know? <laughs> in, in the big top. It'll have to be big... like the first, it'll have to be like the first frame of like what he's doing hanging out before the everything happens. Like, right. yeah, the first frame. <laughs> Zenyatta, yeah. Zenyatta is the Christopher Walken of Overwatch. Yes. This is frustrating. Yay. I don't like this. <laughs> it's very frustrating. I, I juggle. <laughs> Keith, what about you? Um, I think, uh, I mean, I, I feel like I don't dare story-wise either because uh, I'm always so surprised and I just love what they come up with. But I would, if they did one with uh, Torbs, is I would really love to see the dichotomy uh, to have some of it where you're seeing his most living, him being most loving as a father and as a family man, but at the same time, somewhere in that to also show how fierce he can be in battle. Mm. He's completely determined. So I don't envision the story, but I envision it showing both sides of him at his fiercest and at his yeah. most loving. And to me, just having that within one short uh, would be, that would be my dream, just to kind of cover all angles of him like that would be really cool. Robbing a bank, cool. probably, with Sombra. Robbing a bank with Sombra. Uh, <laughs> you guys are yeah, all very serious. 
we're, we used to discover that, hey, you've got, you've got turrets and I've got turrets. We should hang out. Um, <laughs> I'd love to, for, for Symmetra, I'd just love to see how she connects with the rest of the, with the rest of the gang, you know, especially because other than, like, uh, she, she has the Vishkar connection and we still don't know whether she's going to figure out that they are shady. Um, I'd just love to see which way, like, which way does she go? Does she go to the dark side? Does she go to Talon? Does she go to over? What, what happens? We don't know. Does she just dance like this the whole time? I mean, who knows what she does? Who knows? Jen, you were, I know you've talked about what you oh, would like. Oh, I'm so predictable with the answer to this. Okay, just picture it. A therapy session with Farah and Anna. <laughs> Done. Mother daughter therapy session. <laughs> Dr. I mean, Han style. Done. Yes, totally. Totally. Exactly. That's a, I'm maybe like, Mercy, oh my God. maybe Mercy could be the therapist, even though she's not that kind that's of a, that would get a little incestuous, I think. I think be, that's like a cross mm, of of yeah. All right, fair. Know. We'd have to go to some fair, 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 Farah would be talking mostly be able about to... Mercy and Right, exactly. Say, yeah, I know. We're gonna have to talk about Mercy. Fair. Yeah, I know. Fair, fair, fair point. Yeah. Um, we already talked about this one about what, what, keep, but I feel like it. What keeps you motivated or stops you from getting burnt out on the negative aspects of the industry? Nutella. The <laughs> hazelnut oh. spread. Um. <laughs> um. Doing other things. Eating. Yeah. Eating is a good eating. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> eating. But also, like, in particular, now that we're on this Overwatch panel, the love from the fans and the, like, every time you pop your head out and, you know, into the Overwatch fandom, there's, like, this deluge of love that just, uh, you know, comes over you. So I think that that keeps me motivated a lot of times to see, even if it's just one person who sends you a message and is like, this meant so much to me and... And mm -hmm. thank you, you know, you're like, oh yeah, that's why, um, that's why we do it, right? To, yeah. to spread love. Yeah, if I can kind of piggyback on that, uh, especially I think right now, like if this whole pandemic situation has taught us anything, it's that, you know, the arts are, they have value, you know, and what we do has value because you know, I think a lot of times as an actor or, you know, if you're a singer or, or just any kind of artist, it's in, in our society, it's kind of uh, maybe not necessarily, you know, it doesn't get the respect that it, I think. Yeah, it just, yeah. It's like, but what, what do you really yeah, do? It's like, yeah. yeah, you know, sure. You're, you're an actor, but you know, we've seen that, you know, with Netflix or video games, like people need this, you know, they need this kind of thing, you know, right now. And yeah. I, I think that's uh, just knowing that it's, uh, it's very uh, gratifying. Yeah. I think when, I when things are good, when things are going well career wise, uh, the career, the creativity itself motivates me and keeps me going because I love what I do. So I love, you know, booking something and getting just focusing 100 percent on that while I'm doing that and then going to another session and focusing 100 percent on that one. When things are not so great, if you have a bad session, a bad audition, uh, we've all had days that don't go well career wise even. Um, when that happens, it's for me, it's always my family that motivates me because I always know. I'm going home to my family. So no matter how bad it gets, the director can hate me. It can just be the worst. And it doesn't mm -hmm. happen often, but I think many of us have probably had that day where you're like, I was miscast on this and, and I don't feel good and I can't wait till this is over. I'm gonna do, my, I'm gonna do everything I can. I'm gonna be positive. I'm gonna do everything I can. I'm gonna listen. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know what? I'm going home and my family's gonna love me just the same. So that gets me mm -hmm. through when it's difficult. Sure, sure. I, I, I definitely find that the, comp oh, sorry, Kristen, go. Oh, no, I don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, Anjali. No, 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 please, please. please. Uh, there are, I mean, there are, there's content that I have always loved that I go to that always sort of nourishes me and makes me feel good, whether it's that movie or that album or that story or that book or whatever. And obviously, because I'm a fan of animation, a lot of it is animated. And I think to myself, oh, my God, these things mean so much to me. And then life can get rough and tough. And sometimes I want to go back to those to sort of, you know, feel better about myself, like a warm blanket. And, and I think, oh, you know, what am I sometimes things as, as Keith was saying, things get tough and things get rough. And you're like, what am I thinking? And you lose perspective. And I will say I'm guilty of getting on YouTube and watching reaction videos. 
Like I watched a whole bunch of reaction videos to uh, the Overwatch shorts. And it, like, it reminds me because as voice actors, we record in a vacuum. We don't have an audience, you know, and I come from the theater and I'm used to having an audience there that I can see whether they're responding to me or not or whether I'm connecting mm -hmm. with them or not. And as voice actors, we don't have that. Even in this panel, I don't have that, which is why I'm on the Discord. Like right now I'm watching on the Discord, sort of seeing how people are reacting to us because that makes me go, we're doing good, I think. Yeah, yeah. everyone wants to chime in the Discord. So, you know, like, Tell us if we're not. That's our. I, I only I figured it out because I, I got on like two days ago for our diversity panel, and I figured it out then. And otherwise, I probably wouldn't be on it now. Um, but uh, so, so, but th this idea of like watching the reactions of people, and and seriously, people tearing up and crying at watching uh, our our performances in Overwatch you know, and watching the shorts because they're so damn good, you know? And it just, it reminds me of like, oh God, yes. <laughs> like, they're, 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 like, this is what we're doing for people. As we're in the trenches trying to get this, and, and not just Overwatch, but any, our career, right? We're in the trenches in our career trying to get things done. And, and it can become overwhelming. And, th and to take a moment and try to look at it from the audience's perspective and just see how magical it must look what we're doing from their perspective and realizing, right, I contribute to that. I contribute to that magic. And that was the magic that fueled me and, and, and nurtured me when I was younger. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Let me, let me, let me refocus on what's going on here because that's what, that's my contribution. That's what I can share with other people. That's what I'm doing to uplift uh, from, from in my corner of the universe, holding up my, my corner of the sure. universe. Sure. Just reminding ourselves that there is, there is value even when we don't necessarily feel like we are being, um, whether we're, we, so often we don't feel like we're being seen or heard as actors. Like that's one of the big fears is will I, will I, if I put this work out there, will it be seen? Will it be heard? Will my voice be heard? And getting to see so many people you know, having such lovely experiences or reactions or hearing about families coming together or different things because of this game has certainly um, that's certainly helped me through certain lean times and and like um i can't remember specifically who someone said i think it was actually paul said just like do having other lanes what i used to think was career add i now just realize is diversifying like you do with any investment and our time and our energy is an investment so um part of what what also keeps me motivated is knowing that there's there's no time to feel crappy about this one thing, like assess, figure out what you did wrong, figure out what you did right and move on. Cause you got to make more things for, for people to enjoy or for people to, to have those reactions to. You know, so you got it's you guys. Uh, I've missed really seeing you guys and hanging out with you guys, and and you guys motivate me because every one of what you have said today, you know, there's been something in it that ha I, I I take in and I go, you know, that's really true, and I I'm I really want to thank you all for you know all of your experiences and and your opinions that you have have bring to this, you know, because I, it's. Uh, I learn something, you know, every time I'm with you guys and mm -hmm. it's, it's better in person. I do have to say like over sushi or sake, <laughs> yes. you know, which we've, Clearly. which we've, which we've all done, you know, um, yeah. but it, it's just, uh, I really, I'm really so thankful, you know, that, uh, yeah. because it, when you're doing it, it's, it's like, you're just by yourself. And so you go through the, the uh, trials and tribulations of it by yourself and you start thinking, oh my God, I, I, I just like, I blew that, you know, why didn't I, you know, mm -hmm. but then when you hear all of your uh, stories that everybody has the same experience of doing lots of auditions, not booking something and, and then you book something and it's great, but then all that downtime in between where you're thinking, oh my God, I, 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 I really suck. You know, how could I, mm -hmm. how could I suck so bad? Uh, <clears throat> you guys make it all realize that it's this is what we've chosen this is what we go through and the, the collective feeling yeah. you know of of us together is is just so so great so i, I yeah. really thank you thank you so much you know I've, I've missed you guys i really have these panels are really for everyone watching these panels are also for us for a, such a nice chance for all of us to catch up. Yes. Because yeah. we don't see each other so much. And also to bring Jeannie again into the fold and Boris more because we haven't, got, we've only gotten to see you once live in person at BlizzCon. Um, yeah. Just, we miss each other. I miss having you guys but over also, to the house. 
But also I think like, and I think you probably all feel this way. I m get motivated by reminding myself of the privilege that we have to do this. Mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. I waited tables for seven years and I, and I hated it, you know, and it was so hard and it was like banging my head against the brick wall. And now uh, being able to do this for a living, uh, that's, yeah, that's a privilege. Of course, we worked hard, obviously, but there's so many people dreaming of doing what we're doing. So I think that for me, a lot of times I have to remind myself like, all right, well, it might not be going so well right now, or I might be down, but I am able to live my dream, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that as, motivates me. As Paul was Hello? talking about uh, relationships and, and how we've connected and all that, I had, a, I had a question. Do you guys remember who won Best Actress Oscar in uh, 1994? No. no. <laughs> okay, that's my point. That's your Fried point. Green that's tomatoes my point. Just like, <laughs> like, like, Twinnith culture for Shakespeare in love. Maybe. maybe. Um, but do you remember your first grade teacher? Do you remember your, you know, do we yeah. remember the people who have really uh, affected us? And, and mm -hmm. I think about when I have had a really crappy day, it's what are the relationships that I keep nurturing that are giving me love and giving me, you know, mm -hmm. peace and, and it, it, you guys are inspiring me. And that's where I feel like a lot of the uh, gamers who have connected with other gamers online and they haven't been able to maybe make friends in their city, but then somehow they have that friend in Kuwait or that friend in Argentina. And like the fact that we keep connecting like this and making the real connections, I feel like that's what keeps us going because it doesn't matter what voice actor won best voice actor award in you know 2012, because in the end, like we don't remember that stuff. We remember the people who've actually affected us and, and given us inspiration. I feel like that's what we're always moving yeah. towards, right? More love. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was a wildly, un wildly unexpected to have like, you know, when, when you do things in the theater, you have, you, you make, you build these relationships with people over the course of the rehearsal process and the run of the show. So it makes sense that you would take those relationships forward. And even when you're working on a TV show with, with luck, you're working with people for a chunk of time. So we would expect that. It was wildly unexpected to find the cast family that I'm closest to of all the things I've ever done through this voiceover project on a game that none of us knew none of us knew what it was when we first auditioned like yes. that that the combination of those two things is part of what keeps me going too is remembering you never know what the next the next big one is going to be something you think is going to be little could end up being huge every audition you really don't know what person you're going to meet on this tiny project that might lead to this thing or this person you're going to meet on the street today the things just things do just kind of blow you know how, they blow my mind how how they happen because sometimes it just sneaks into your world rather than being with big fanfare like you booked the next big show um my first broadway show originated as a show that we did in chicago for 200 dollars a week at a regional theater and it was set in a pool and we did it in the freezing cold in chicago and we never would have known that that was going to have the effect that it did. Yeah. And this game, awesome. all this came to it with just, you know, it's just another audition. We knew it was Blizzard, but it, it was another audition. Um, I don't, with the exception of Kristen, I don't think any of us knew about Overwatch before we auditioned, right? I think, and you didn't, oh, you didn't, didn't either. either. You didn't. No, I exactly didn't know. You, you understand when I came in again, I thought I was playing a secondary character and I play this right. gorilla and I thought, okay, whatever. And then I'm at BlizzCon, was it 2015, I think, or 2014, I think it was, because I was in uh, World of Warcraft and we were, we were promoting Warlords of Draenor because I was playing Vindicator Maraud and that. And I'm backstage in the green room and there's a little screen that shows it's showing on the big screen. And I'm just backstage, just sort of chilling out before we go for the World of Warcraft panel. And this film starts playing on the screen that looks like a Pixar film. It's this bright, shiny, happy, yeah. it was first Overwatch trailer. They were, yeah. they were premiering it at that BlizzCon. And I'm sitting watching, what is this Pixar film? Wait a minute, there's a gorilla. I play a gorilla. Wait a minute, is this my game? Overclock, overdrive, what is this? I have no idea. <laughs> right. like, I had no idea. Overclock. Yeah, I, had, I didn't even know what the name of the game was. And yeah. it wasn't until literally the gorilla came on the screen that I was like, I think that's me. Yes, that's me. Like, and then everyone's like, that's you? I'm like, yeah, that's me. Um, so I don't <laughs> know where this is going. And even after that, I thought Tracer was the main character. And, and we would go into record and I say, well, you're... 
I, I would I would do my uh, we did my the first uh, character uh, film was for was Recall for with Winston right that was the first sort of uh, cinematic that we that we did that released on YouTube after the trailer. <laughs> And I said, well, you're making one of these for every character in Overwatch, right? And they're like, well, we don't know. I was like, you don't, you don't know? Really? I thought you were just, I thought I was just one of many. And they're like, no, you're sort of the center. I was like, when was somebody going to tell me this? Like, no, I had no clue going into any of this. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. Can we acknowledge uh, Jen's amazing top? Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's like, I've absolutely. Show off guys. the top. Thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like this plasticky. Amazing. Oh my God. It's like this plasticky material. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it has buttons. That's so cool, hey guys. Thanks. Feel before it's on. I know it's so <laughs> Zod, right, Josh? It's for you, Josh. It's for you. Oh. Feel before Zod. Neil. Um, I did say, Zod. I did. Before I did send you a message the other day, Jen, that I really wanted to see you in something iridescent because there was an article in the Atlantic about the the about iridescence in fashion and i was like this is that gen all well over. i did a story about iridescence in fashion years ago when i was collecting oh, all this well. iridescence so i've got like a lot of accessories with lots of iridescence <laughs> And are you wearing yellow, your yellow platforms? I'm I'm wearing socks. I don't have any oh, so platforms you don't have no on right now. On? I have no. Can you imagine? You I know. I wear them in my sleep, Paul. I have to like <laughs> <Plus> your <laughs> socks. platforms off. Yeah. Show us your I socks. Know. You know what? I have all these awesome ones. I have like I have like ones that say all sorts of filthy words on them and are great. But I'm not. I'm just wearing little black nothing socks. I should have my good socks with me. What am I thinking? What am Here's I thinking? Question. Here's the question. If your character had a you inspired skin, what would it, what would it be? This, this is actually another repeat answer, but it's really the best answer. So I, I had a fan artist after I was at BlizzCon and at, Bliz, at first BlizzCon, I wore my Neil before Zod t-shirt and metallic silver pants and my flame boots. And so an artist, an amazing artist made a flame skin for Farah. And I was like, oh my gosh, of course Farah yes. needs a flame skin. Yes. Of course she needs a flame skin. So I, that, that without a question would be the Jen inspired Farah skin. Some like fabulous vintage, like great colors, flame skin. Nice. Hot Horace, rod, what about like you? Hot rod Farah. Because uh, uh, Sigma does not, uh, Sigma looks not quite like you. So uh, what what would what would um you just look slightly? I feel different an insult you. coming on. Uh, no, <laughs> no. I, on the contrary, it is it is decidedly the opposite. Um, yes. So what what would be Sigma's Boris inspired skin? Sorry, what's that? If you had a, if Sigma had a skin that was inspired by you, it was his Boris skin. What would he like? What would he be? What would he what would he be rocking? What my fa my fashion sense? Uh, I don't know, old man. Or your like or your crazy. <laughs> like a yeah. blue, blue linen shirt and satin, like orthopedic shoes or something like that. <laughs> Ackies. Well, I mean, I'm sure, shoes. I mean, he'd wearing, exactly. He'd have shoes on those toes. So yeah. uh, that yeah. that is a good thing. That yeah, is, I put some shoes on thing. Sigma. I think I put well some socks and some shoes, maybe some clogs. But um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Josh, but yeah, what about a you? loosely fitting linen shirt of some some sort. I think. We get we'll it. We'll call him. We'll call him Boris. <laughs> summer, <laughs> summer Sigma, uh, summer Gma. I'm. I shouldn't come up with names. English um, patient Sigma. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, a little Ray Fines in there. I like it. Ray Fines <laughs> and Boris will take it. He will take it. Um, uh, Jeannie, what about you? Uh, if she, if Echo was going to wear anything from my wardrobe, it would probably be either leopard print, um, or leopard print. Oh, yes, yes. 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 yeah, awesome. Even wow, makeup, I would have her made up with a little black nose, and and then you know, she could say her lines, but also put a little. Oh, in there too. So yeah, flying leopard. Yes, I love I it. it. Cool. I oh. dig that. Anyone else? Anyone else have some winner? Uh, yes, Kristen. So I've always wanted to see Winston in a NASA flight suit. 
because mm-hmm. I actually went to Space Academy when I was in high school and did all the simulators and did the whole week thing at Space Camp and whatnot. You were at Space so Camp. You I was totally at Space Camp. Camp. Although when I was in high school, we called it Space Academy because Space Camp was for the little kids and Space Academy was the one where we got in the big simulators uh, and did the whole thing. And I did the EVA with the so air pads and the, the space suit and everything. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I was I was a big Space so you Academy were guy. like a, a space cadet. Yeah, no, I wanted I I was I was going to major in theater and astrophysics when I was in college because I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be like a military pilot, and then I realized I have to kill people, and I was like, no, that's not good. Let me be an astronaut instead. So I was sort of obsessed with being an astronaut, and and so I had a flight suit. I had a when we came back when I came back from Space Academy, I had a NASA flight suit with all the patches on it and everything else. So I would love to see uh, Winston in a NASA flight suit. I mean, he's got to be a NASA awesome. nerd. Come on, I mean, it would make doesn't sense. he have yeah, sort of like a, a skin like that? Some sort of like a no, he doesn't have a skin like I, that. I, I, well, I haven't been like very close of... attention, but I, I haven't seen like a proper blue NASA flight suit oh, oh, with okay. like the Apollo 11 patches and like, you know, Robert and Crippen from <clears throat> first shuttle launch and all that kind of stuff on him. So that that would be sort of the old school nerdy NASA suit. <laughs> um, Josh, what about you? Because obviously uh, you two bear, bear so much resemblance to your yes, character. I know, right? So much, yeah. So it's much whole... physical resemblance. I want to um, say maybe like he'd be wearing like a graphic tee and like sweatpants, just kind of, <laughs> yeah, just kind of like mean, um, and some like nice, really expensive like shoes, or Jordans or something. Um, All right, but but maybe uh, maybe we call him what would we call would we call him Chill Hog? What would we Bro we Hog? Bro Hog. Bro Hog. Bro Hog. Bro Hog. Bro Hog. Bro Bro Hog. And he's just yeah. like. He's just really chill and like instead of inhaling gas in the mask, it like exhales like smoke out the mask or whatever, yeah. you know. Like he's just like, <laughs> has like a, he's like vaping or something. He's like super, oh my <laughs> he's God. super hipster. Like I think for Symmetra, I just need I would need to give her higher heels because her heels are too practical. Um, <laughs> if it was if it was me, she would have to be wearing high heel boots that come up to here with like a four and a half inch heel instead of these like two inch heels that she's running around in. Cause you know, what, those are practically tennis shoes. So we're <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's they're, not they're practically nearly. flats. Yeah, they're not, exactly. That's not <laughs> nearly as impressive. You guys, we only have a few more minutes and I want to give everyone a chance to talk about anything else that they might be working on right now and to let everybody know time. where to find them on the socials. And I'm gonna start this, however, by saying all of you who are here, thank you so much for joining us. You can also join all of us all from pretty much right after this panel, on through the weekend, everybody uh, here and uh, Chloe Hollings and Ben Zantuan and Johnny Cruz now are all doing signings this weekend through uh, streamily.com. You can check it out. Um, uh, streamly.com slash overwatch you can check out everybody's timings and all of those fun things but I would like to pass this to you guys Boris where can everybody find you and what are fun uh, things that you might be working on that you want to share uh, people can find me on my name in full just google that and then you'll get to my twitter and instagram and on my instagram it'll say when I'll be signing some lovely sigma prints this uh, tomorrow and on Saturday, and maybe on Sunday. Um, and I'm working on all sorts of crazy stuff, but I'm not allowed to share any of that knowledge with anyone, which sounds really up my own. But we can all we can all thing. check out your game, so the one that we talked about. Yeah, oh yes, you, you can. You mention, can mention that, <laughs> mention that to the people who came you late. Can. It's called Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and it's out on Xbox and on PC, and now also on Switch as of right now. It's a beautiful oh, game. Oh. You guys have Love it. Did you play it, Josh? I have. I have played. I played the the one before, uh, not the newest one. Um, what? I know. And now I'm. I'm. That's ashamed. the one you need. So the I'll get the new one, one today on Steam. <laughs> Pop it up. Please, please. Jeannie, where can the where can the people find you? The people can find me at Gbole either on Instagram or the Twitter. I'm not really on Twitter very often, um, but yeah, on the gram. Um, I'm also signing today at 2 p.m. and then Friday and Saturday, you can go to my Instagram and see when I'm signing and just come and hang out. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it. A game was announced yesterday. Um, 
but I, 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 I'm terrible. I'm just like, tell me when I'm supposed to talk about it because I'm not going to remember. But they, they just announced um, uh, a, a game that I did uh, one of the voices for a professor. That's all I'm saying. So that, but I, I think that could be anything. Could be anything. Right. Could be anything. Could be anything. Could be a Gilligan's Island game, and That's you're right. the professor. We'll never know. Uh, hey. I'm betting it's not a Gilligan's Island game. <laughs> I mean, it could be. How cool! Could be, you're right. Wouldn't you feel? Wouldn't you feel sheepish if it was? Look at that! They surprise you, Silverstein. Um, Caro, where can everybody find you? Uh, uh, my Insta is Ravasa. My Twitter is Carolina Ravasa. I just started Twitch live streaming. I'm also on a game called Valorant, and I've been interviewing all the VAs there and the writer. And then I'm going to move over to you, lovely people, because I'm having a really good time chatting yeah. people up. So the Twitch is Carolina Ravasa, and I am soon going to be launching a Kickstarter campaign, guys, because I am crowdfunding for a film that I'm going to act in. I play a cosplayer, <laughs> and her trials and tribulations during quarantine. Uh, that's coming soon, so stay tuned. Please follow all those so that you can help me share because I want to do some crowdfunding and, and make the film happen. Ta-da! I'm so excited about that. I'm so excited Yay. about that. Crispin. Uh, yeah, um, my handles on social media are just Crispin Freeman, all one word, whether it's Twitter or Instagram, or whatnot. I will acknowledge that I'm not really a, a big social media person. Uh, I put a lot of my energy into my podcast, which is called Voice Acting Mastery, which I've been running now for nine years, which is sort of terrifying wow. to think about. And it's incredible. Uh, but, uh, so good. Oh, well, thank you. And thank you, Anjali, for coming on it. Um, I've had I've interviewed Anjali on the, on the podcast. We did, we did a sort of swap uh, interview when I got on your uh, fun size videos, which was fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, mo most of the stuff, uh, I, 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 as Boris would say, I, I cannot talk about stuff that's coming up. I wait for, like, my fans to tell me when something I'm in has come out. And I go, oh, well, I guess it's public now. Uh, because otherwise, NDAs, I would just get in trouble. So I just sort of don't don't talk about it. Uh, but, you know, keep your eyes out. Uh, things, things will come up, I'm sure. But otherwise, please check out my podcast. I try to share as much useful, valuable, practical information on the podcast about voice acting in the industry as possible. Uh, and, and otherwise, please uh, head to our, our signings. I'm going to be doing one today at one o'clock after this panel and another one on Sunday. But uh, there's a whole big schedule of all of us doing all these signings. If you want to come join us on most of us, I think are going to be streaming on Instagram live uh, or Twitch. Um, so come join us and you can hang out, with, hang out with us there. I speak English for a living. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so how about you? Me, me. Oh, yes, you. Paul, yes, you. Paul. Uh, hey, yeah. Uh, oh. Find me on oh. Instagram or Twitter at Theo Chen at F E O C H I N. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be uh, signing today, tomorrow, and Saturday at one o'clock uh, p.m. P uh, Pacific time. And um, yeah, if you're looking for for more content, um, I did some voices on Mulan. You can find that on Disney Plus. And there's a terrific uh, show called Bulge Bracket, um, and it's on Amazon. Ah, yes. It's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Just uh, wear a mask and please remember to vote. Yes. 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 Vote. yes. yes. Everybody yes. vote. If you need to find information, click over to nerdsvote.com. Not only do they have all the information you need about voting, uh, they also have lots of really cool swags. So you can get those. Um, Paul Nakauchi, where can people find you? Um, just uh, Paul Nakauchi uh, on Instagram, just my name. And then on Twitter, it's Paul Nakauchi number one. Um, I don't really go on Twitter very much, but um, Facebook is just uh, Paul Nakauchi. Um, what's coming up? Let's see. I have, a, there's a couple things that I did, a couple animated series that are going to be coming up, that, but they probably won't be coming out for another maybe year or so um, for Netflix and one was for Marvel. Ooh. So um, nice. Yeah. nice. So they'll be coming out. And, um, and then I'm, yeah. I'm also, I'm, I'm on that game that uh, Fia was uh, the main character on the like ghosts of Tsuchima. Oh, that's you, what you did mention. He has a, he has a major character. I have a small part in it. <clears throat> But um, so that's exciting. Games, I'll listen yeah. for you. Cool, Jen. Oh wow. Okay, I am on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and Twitch, all at Hey It's Jen Cone, J E N C O H N. And I'm mostly an Instagrammer. I am less a Facebooker and less a Twitterer. So Instagram, if you're going to pick one, is where to go. And on Twitch. 
I stream twice a week. I stream on Mondays doing Ask Bird Mom streams and either on Wednesdays or Fridays doing fashion streams, doing interview streams, doing styling streams, doing field trips, blah, blah, blah. It's super fun at Hey, It's Jen Cohn on Twitch. And I too am shackled by my NDAs, so I can't talk about a few very cool things that are coming up, but I'm very excited. And so keep your eyes and ears open. Whoop, and whoop. I'm whoop, whoop. And then I'm doing my signings for Streamly are tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, or 5 p.m. on the West Coast. And tomorrow at noon, New York time, so 9 a.m. West Coast time, because tomorrow night is Erev Rosh Hashanah. So happy New Year to everyone, because yes. New Year happy starts New Year. tomorrow night. Rosh yes. Happy Rosh Hashanah, everybody. Right. Oh, and happy new moon. Today is a new moon. Just remember that. So we've got the combo, pla combo platter there. Combo yeah. platter. Combo. Uh, Lucy Paul. Hello. Uh, you can find me at the letter U, love, L-U-C-I-E on Instagram and on Twitch. Uh, Lucy Paul comedy on Twitter. And uh, write down my address. It's, uh, no. Uh, and yeah, I do streams on Twitch. I'm on Instagram. I try to be funny on Twitter sometimes. And sometimes I rant. And sometimes I'm just happy that there's life on Venus. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm signing at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, 2 p.m. tomorrow. And, uh, and yeah, love, peace, happiness, wear a mask, vote. I can't vote. I'm not an American citizen. So remember, it's a privilege. <laughs> and, um, it is. It's a privilege. Yes. You, uh, you're laughing at. No, it is. I grew up in this country, but I'm not a citizen. Uh, not everybody is. Uh, there's all types of immigrant stories. So use your privilege. Yep. Exercise your right. Do it. You won't regret it and um be nice to people yes just do it amen yeah do it do it do it, do it, do it. uh you can find me on instagram keith silverstein on twitter i'm at silver talkie t-a-l-k-i-e uh you can check me out there uh, as far as i mean like everybody else i've got stuff in the pipe but uh, that i can't talk about um recently netflix dropped uh transformers war for cybertron siege and i play jet fire in that so that, that yeah. Yeah, you do. They do. Yeah, I do. I, I, I mean, it sounds like this, but... Uh, Bob Knotts here, Herbie. Herbie and Bob Knotts. <laughs> um, and I'm signing uh, this weekend. I'm signing Saturday and Sunday for on Streamily, and I'll be um, live streaming on Instagram at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So come say hi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey. Yeah. Oh, you can find me uh, hunting rebel scum in your local Star Destroyer. Uh, the, <laughs> me and a bunch of the cast just of just celebrated season three on Netflix of uh, uh, Gretzico being released. So that's our brand new, really amazing season. Really great cast uh, helmed by the uh, incredible Erica Mendez and Ben Diskin for Haida and uh, Retzko. Um, you can find me on Twitch also. I'm Optimus underscore Slimed. My social media is Cranky J on Twitter and I'm Menace Made on Instagram. I'm all over the place. I'll be, I had to cancel a signing today, but I'll be continuing the other ones on Saturday. So no worries there. And yeah, um, I'm really happy to be here. It was great to see everybody. So yes. So Yay. Yay. Where can we find you? Well, let me tell you. Um, uh, you guys, thank you for asking, Lucy. Uh, you guys can find me on the interwebs. My handle is usually Sweet Ange with three E's because we're selling S W E E E T A N J. Um, you can also find me on the Facebook at my name. Um, and as for things that are coming up, uh, I too have signings. You can find all the times on my socials and all that. I still am doing my show on YouTube. I am fun size. There are three of you on this panel that I have not yet, four of you on this panel that I have not yet had the joy of bringing on the show. So I'm uh, looking forward to making that happen if technology uh, allows me to. Jeannie and I tried and technology beat, beat me down. Um, but more, the thing that I'm the most excited about being able to share right now is that a movie that I shot last year in New Orleans called Evil Eye is coming out on Amazon uh, Prime Video on the 13th of October. It is a, a psychological thriller starring Sarita Chowdhury, 
um, who a lot of you might know from Jessica Jones and from Homeland and, uh, and Bernie White, who you know from practically every show known to man. So uh, I'm very, very excited and I want you all to see it. And Carolina was there helping me to audition for it when I was at BlizzCon last year. So or, or helping me make a tape for it. It wasn't BlizzCon, it was some other thing. But anyway, so um, I'm very excited that it's coming out. It looks awesome and the trailer is out now. So keep an eye out for that. Very, very cool. Yay! Um, Ooh, yay. You guys, yay, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I know we went over. I hope we didn't uh, keep anyone too long, but we wanted to, just, it's hard to say goodbye. Um, thank you, Pax, for hosting us and for uh, hosting our little party. And we will see you all out there in the world. Be safe, wear your mask, take care of yourself, take care of each other, because we are the only people we had. So if Roadhog care. can wear a mask, so can you. <laughs> and there it is. Thank you yep. for doing an amazing thank job. You. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Anjali, beautiful. Thank you Great job, Anjali. Thank you, guys. So great. Great seeing all you guys. Take yeah. Care, everybody. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.